welcome back for another news session here on 3R. Uh, let's see what we got going on today. We've got, ooh, watch Kiss Soundcheck at the Hollywood Bowl during the final leg of the End of the Road Tour. That's kind of a different looking. Did they have them spikes earlier in the End of the Road? Let's see what we got here. Uh, plaster caster, ick. I like it, but I'm tired of it. As you can see there, they're kind of just going through the motions as you would in a sound check. Hopefully Gene puts a little more effort into that uh, chorus when they performed live. But uh, yeah, and you could also tell children, and I do mean children, that was real singing. There was no backtracking, no bullshit. So just uh, learn to accept that you were all wrong and that it's a minimal usage, and uh, just move on with your life. Okay, what else do we got going on here? Dave Lombardo, he'd be on board for a hypothetical Slayer reunion tour. Mm-hmm. Can't say that I care. Uh, Slipknot, couldn't care less. Queensryche. Unless they get GF back, it's just yeah, not newsworthy to me. Uh, Queens of the Stone Age, Fall Out Boy, Avenge Center of Hole, that sounds terrible. Uh, look at this. Bruce Dickinson, Iron Maiden, of course, to star in an ABBA tribute band horror movie. Joining the ranks of D. Snyder and Alice Cooper for starring in slasher flicks, I presume. A uh, film written by Bruce's son, Austin Dickinson, and based on an original story by Andrew Prendergrass, just Teddy Pentagrass's original maiden name, uh, produced the movie alongside Austin. Okay, so the film centers around an ABBA tribute band who find themselves, uh, along with other tribute acts, trapped in a nightclub at the start of the apocalypse doesn't say what the apocalypse is due to. Uh, but Jordan and his band must work together to save themselves, humanity, and the future of music. Why not? It's kind of like a horror twist on Bill and Ted, right? Uh, in addition to Bruce Dickinson, the film will have various cameos from the world of rock and heavy metal, described as the blood a blood-drenched gore fest. Okay. Yeah, looks interesting anyway. Probably suck. Probably go like straight to Netflix or something, but hey, good on him. Uh, Ex Japan bassist Hiroshi Heath Mori. Mori? Dead at 55. Huh? What happened here? Do they say? Uh, cancer. God damn it. You know, when I was growing up, Either you had a heart attack or a stroke or, you know, this cancer shit every time you turn around. Oh, boy, that's sad. Okay. <clears throat> Flyleaf, never heard of him, says Pantera inspired her to start screaming. Well, truth be told, when I hear a Pantera, I am inspired to scream too and then shut the music off. So I, I see where she's coming from. 
Uh, don't care. Lamb of God. Yeah, whatever. Uh, Grateful Dead ties record for most top 40 albums on the Billboard 200. Let's see. Who'd we tie here? Now tied with Frank Sinatra and Elvis Presley. Both 100,000 times better. But hey, good on them for keeping the druggies interested for 40 years. Uh, Queen's right to perform the entire debut EP, the Warning album, on the Origins Tour next year. Okay, big deal. Uh, European Bass Warrior Tour, stupid. Uh, Metallica sets attendance record for St. Louis's Dome at America's Center, over 100,000 tickets sold. Geez, usually that's shit that you only see like in South America and stuff. Uh, let's see here. St. Louis, Missouri's venue, Dome at America Center. 100,000 attendees, the highest ever attendance in the venue. Friday's show was part of Metallica's M72 tour, which featured Pantera, Mammoth, Wolfgang Van Halen and Sunday's gig included Five Finger Death Punch and Nine Inch Nails. You gotta be honest with you, that sounds like a horrific, horrific time, but hey, it sold. What the fuck do I know? Uh, Getty Lee auctioning off part of his baseball memorabilia collection. Couldn't care less. Black Sabbath. Uh, original manager says using war pigs in the tr- in trailer for Napoleon movie was a masterstroke. Whatever. Ozzy and Sharon uh, explain why early Randy Rhodes rehearsal demos have never been released. It's got something to do with greed, right? Uh, Holy Grail rehearsal tapes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Sharon, uh, Ozzy offered a more practical reason. Uh, the quality sucks. He said the quality is fucking dreadful. That's classic Ozzy. And Sharon concurred saying it was recorded on a little cassette machine, a tiny little cassette machine. And yeah, it's not for us to do anything with. Yeah, I get that. There's really not much you can do with that kind of recording. Still be kind of cool to hear though. Uh, don't care. Don't care. Richie Sambora on his reunion with Bon Jovi. It's time to do it, and I concur. Uh, Let's see here. 64 years old, Mr. Sambora is. Uh, There's a documentary that's being done about the band and stuff that I participated in, and people want to come see us play, and it's going to make everybody happy. Uh, Essentially, that's why why you do it at this point. Well, we'll see. Rumor has it John's kind of an ass to work with, so who knows if that'll go down. Okay. So here's something I kind of wanted to touch on. I did see uh, Wendy Dio says Ronnie James Dio hologram worked for a while, but she's not into doing that again. And I'm just kind of curious to see what everybody's, because I'm kind of tore on this. Uh, Let's see. Let's give a little sample here. So you can kind of see the screen right here. Yeah, from what I'm seeing here, this looks incredibly boring. I did then go through uh, and check out ABBA. I was always a big ABBA fan. And uh, 
that thing they did with the ABBA avatars, which I'm assuming is kind of the same technology looked a lot cooler, but I don't know how much of that, you know, it was like a production video on YouTube. Like it was almost put together for a video release or something. So there was like some really cool, like uh light spikes coming from the ceiling. And I don't know if that was actually in the place or if that was added in in production, but that looked cool. But here's my thing. At the end of the day, and I get, you know, some of these people, you know, they're dead. So how else are you going to see him? But the, not this deal one. I, I, this looks just boring as hell, but that Apple one looked really cool with all the theatrics and everything. And they kind of changed him into different outfits. It, it was different, right? But the original performance is obviously recorded from somewhere. So how is this different really than just buying the DVD when it comes out and watching it at home on your 65 inch TV? I I just, I get some people or a lot of people like to go just for the the festivities and being around like-minded people and everything. But man, you figure nowadays, you know, for a big act tickets, about a hundred bucks for a decent seat you know, 50 bucks for something way back in the nosebleeds. Traffic, parking, um, ridiculously priced concessions, all of that to watch a recording. Because let's call it what it is, whether it looks 3D or not. Okay, so, okay, so then do a deal in 3D IMAX in a movie theater. How is that any different? You know, it's okay, so you got some some hack musicians playing, you know, and he's overdubbed, I guess. I don't I don't know how that works, but on one hand, it's cool. Like I'm a huge Elvis fan, right? Ultimate bucket list thing that could never happen to see Elvis in his prime. But would I go do it? for a hologram or avatar or whatever they want to say, probably not. I mean, if it was somewhere in Vegas, you know, and I get, you know, discounted $20 tickets to go. Yeah. Okay. You know, if you're up close, I can see how it might kind of be surreal, but if you're sitting, you know, 30 rows back or up in the bleachers or something, it's really not going to look any different than watching, you know, the people who go and God bless them because the fan reaction in, in sports like baseball and football adds so much to the game on TV, but you're pretty much paying all that money going through the traffic, buying the overpriced beer and whatever you want to snack on to sit way up in the stands and watch the game on a big screen with no broadcast, unless you want to put earphones in and listen to your local radio station or, or whatever, I don't understand why anybody would prefer that to sitting on your couch on Sunday and flipping the game on, on your big screen with your stocked bar and your, you know, barbecue and whatever else. But that's just me. Uh, same applies here. As cool as it would be, say, if you're in the first 10 to 15 rows, just to kind of see it kind of be trippy, right? But I I put myself a huge Kiss fan, obviously. I put myself, say, 10, 15 years into the future. Hypothetically, they've all passed or most of them have passed. And to be able to see, uh, you know, a 1976 concert by hologram in an arena with all the expense that goes into it, like I discussed, would I want to do that over just watching a, you know, a Blu-ray version of it or, a, you know, a ultra high definition stream of it at home in the comfort of my own home? No, I, I don't think so. I, I just don't, I don't think this has a future. I really don't. Um, it might be, you know, acceptable for big names. Like I said, Elvis, Michael Jackson, stuff like that. But in a limited capacity, I mean, certainly you couldn't do this for like a, you know, a year, year and a half long tour, you know, state to state, country to country. 
maybe five, ten shows, I would think. Maybe you'd it would pay dividends, but I hope that's not the direction we're going because this whole AI fad, um, it really does nothing for me. I mean, it's bad enough the youth nowadays from millennials all down can't go to a restaurant without having their head buried in their phones and can't go shopping without walking into shit because they're on their phones and can't even bother to pick their head up from their phone when they're walking in a parking lot to a Walmart about to get hit by four cars. That's bad enough, right? And now we're pushing in a direction to where we don't even need real musicians. We can just do this computer holographic shit. I just, I, I feel so bad for the, for the future. And the, and the thing is they think it's perfectly cool. They don't get what it was like. And I know they can't obviously go back and see the things we saw, but this is a poor substitute to me. And if this is the route they're going to go, I guess it's my opinion, unless it was dirt cheap or a gift. I I'd rather sit home and, and watch it streamed on, you know, YouTube or wherever else. But it's kind of curious what everybody else thinks of that. I, I don't know. I just, I'm not going to shit on it, but it just, I don't understand the appeal. But anyway, apparently she's not going to do it again. So maybe she's seeing, seeing the same thing. I don't know. A uh, bunch of people I don't know performing a Taylor Swift song. God help us. Why would you want to do that? Um, Vivian Campbell offers update on ongoing battle with Hodgkin's lymphoma. That sucks. Uh, Trans-Siberian, yada, yada. Uh, Toto's doing a uh, headline shows in 2024, huh? Let's see. Announced details of the band's headline appearance in North America within the pl- within the planned journey itinerary. What? For February 2024 through April 2024, additional shows will be shared in the upcoming weeks. European tours staged in July and August. Uh, are they calling the tour journey? Is that what it is? I guess. Uh, past decade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, I, I like some Toto tunes. I, I guess I just don't see how they're a headliner, but hey man, if they got enough fans out there yet, go get them. Let's see what we're doing here. Uh, I've got... Mississippi, Florida, South Carolina, Alabama, North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wisconsin. Hey, North Dakota, Grand Forks. Look at that. 300 miles away from me. Well, I guess it would depend if they got a supporting act that's going to carry some weight. When is that? North Dakota, Grand Forks. March 2nd. At the Alara Center, that's where I saw the farewell tour for Kiss. Nice arena. All right, so that looks like about the extent of anything newer. Um, yeah, I kind of breezed through some of this stuff the other night. Yeah, I just kind of, kind of wanted to touch on that. What you guys thought of that AI stuff? Um, and like I said, it, I'm sure some people think it's the coolest thing, but. I don't know. Like I said, I'm kind of split on it. I just, I don't know. It would be cool, yet it'd be a waste of money, if that makes sense. When you think of what you're actually seeing, just because, like I said, do it in 3D IMAX. How is it any different? You know, for a hell of a lot cheaper. But People like the experience of going to concerts, I guess. I mean, look, Hairball sells tickets, and my God, that was one of the most excruciating experiences I ever sat through. So it is what it is. Whatever people want, I guess. I just hope to hell the future of live music will keep this shit in check. But anyway, that's all I got for you guys now. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching.